how the blood flow through the heart first. Okay. Where does it come from? The in the superior vena cava and the inferior to the right Normal cardiac output. Sixty Is that why? Oh, no, we're oh, heart, heart rate. rate. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> normal heart rate is sixty to hundred. What's the normal cardiac output? Five hundred. Five liters per minute. Can y'all understand that that is two two liter bottles of Coke, and then one liter of Coke a minute. That you're hard to do with. Oh, you get cardiac. How do you get a cardiac output? <coughs> and stroke volume is what, like 70? Yes. Times 70 beats per minute equals. So we'll round it to. 4.9 liters per minute, roughly. Okay. So, with congestive heart failure, what do you think their cardiac output looks like? It's lower. Oh, wow. So, we have a low cardiac output in CHF, right? So, what would be a low cardiac output? It's above 40% in CHF, Yes. 45%. Yes. But we're talking cardiac output right this second. Okay. Um, so I would say, you know, like less than three. <coughs> um, ejection fraction. EF is a percent, and it's um, normal is 55 to 70 percent. An ejection fraction is the amount of blood that gets squeezed out of the ventricle. It's a percentage every time. So why is it not 100 percent? Because there's always a little bit left over in your afterlife. There's always a little bit left over in that ventricle right there. Because if all of it went out, it would like slam shut and like get stuck. So that's not very good. So then they'd probably, they'd probably drop dead, right? right? So there's always just a little bit in there to kind of stack, keep it open a little bit. So that's why ejection fraction is not at 100%. Now, somebody with congestive heart failure, their ejection fraction would be... What did you say, Debbie? 45% below. Like less than 45%. Um, I've heard of people being at like 15%. So, this would be bad. 
CHF, probably end stage. And here we still have something to work with. Still have some function left. Does that make sense? Now, we usually get an EF on an echocardiogram. And we all can also do it on the cat lab. Yeah, the cat. So, so I want to kind of go over the little basics before I get into like the whole. So cardiac output goes down in congestive heart failure, and the stroke volume is normally 70 times whatever your heart rate is. We should be about five liters a minute. Ejection fraction is the amount that. The, blood, the percentage that the ventricles eject, so if it gets way down low, then it's bad CHF end stage. And we still have some function if it's this way, on the continuum. Right. So, let's... <coughs> now, what causes congestive heart failure? So causes coronary artery disease. What causes coronary artery disease? Smoking, smoking drugs, McDonald's, <laughs> hypertension, smoking, hypertension, diet, McDonald's. Um, High cholesterol. Uh, let's see. What else did y'all say? MI. Yeah. How do we have an MI? Because the coronary, the coronary artery disease, disease right? Yeah. So, um, what else can cause it? Anything else? How would gender play a difference? What does it say about gender? Black males are higher. Well, yes, but you know that they have discovered that the number one killer of women is heart disease, and they used to not. Um, they used to just say that they were being hysterical, give them some Valium and send them home and they dropped dead in the kitchen. Because women do not present the same way that men do at all. We have like kind of non-specific symptoms. Of course, oh, y'all are just hormonal. So. <laughs> Causes coronary artery disease. Genital. And how about like one of those infections? What did y'all learn for last test? That rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic heart disease. All right. So. The congestive heart failure, all these causes, we have a decreased cardiac output, right? So what happens if we can't, if it, if we can't, if the left ventricle can't push it out, where does it go? Back home, back. Keeps it backing up, right? Okay. So there becomes more pressure. There's an increased pressure in that ventricle, right? Because if it can't squeeze it all out, then it just keeps filling up and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's something in your heart muscles called BNP. Brain naturetic peptide. 
Now, what this does, this occurs naturally in the body. This will actually cause vasodilation. and diuresis. So as soon as your cardiac output starts to go down and the pressure starts to build back up, the body releases this BNP which causes vasodilation and diuresis. So why would I want to vasodilate? So I want to make my blood vessels into a mass flow rate McDonald's straw, right? So then, will my cardiac output go up so if I have a bigger hose to pump into? Yes. Now, what about diuresis? What, how will that work? So then that would decrease the volume too, wouldn't it? So that would decrease the volume. So, so initially co with congestive heart failure, this happens, okay? This is not very strong, though. It works for just a little bit and it's not strong enough, okay? <coughs> but, have y'all read in your book that we check a BNP on patients? So this gets released into the bloodstream. So when they get, so we'll check their BNP level. And I think if it's at a thousand, then that's like severe heart failure. I think anything greater than 300 indicates heart failure. Does that sound right from your book? I know y'all read during all this snow and cold. Y'all had nothing else to do. Okay. Now, after this, so if my cardiac output is going down, who's not getting perfused? Who? Which organ? The brain. The brain, brain kidneys. So you'll have a decreased renal perfusion, right? And if your brain didn't get perfused, What happens if the brain's not getting blood? What gets stimulated? Ner nerve type thing? I'm going to fight or flight. Oh, sympathetic. So stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. Because if my brain's not getting blood flow and oxygen, then it's going to start like, uh-uh, we got to do something here. So the sympathetic nervous system gets stimulated, and what does that do? So it will, what will it do to the heart rate? It's increasing. It'll also increase your blood pressure. So, now that this has come out, this is way stronger than your BNP. So who's going to take over? The McDonald's flow rate straw or coffee stir? So now we've got a tiny little coffee stir to push into, for the left ventricle to push into. Is that going to help the cardiac output? No. Is the increased heart, heart rate going to increase cardiac output in this situation? No. 
So both of these, all this together will lead to a increased cardiac workload. Is that helpful for a heart that's already having trouble? No. So what's this going to do? Is this going to make it better or worse? Worse. It's going to worsen it, right? Mm -hmm. But now this, this is stuff we don't even think about. We don't even realize it's going on. As soon as your kidneys and your brain, uh-oh, we don't have enough blood, perfusion, we got to do something. So here's what the brain does. What's the matter of time when that happens? Is it different for each person? Is it within a matter of hours, within a matter of days, weeks, months? Usually, now that's pretty instantaneous. The BNP? Yeah. Okay. Because the pressure, as soon as the pressure starts to go up, and it depends on how little perfusion they are getting, and then this will kick in. If they're still getting just a little enough, I mean, but if they're severe, if somebody goes into flash like pulmonary edema, congestive heart failure, then that'll kick in like immediately. So, CHF is a kind of a gradual process over years. It depends. Now, if they have a major MI, this starts right away. So, now, if, we, if I have an MI, so I've already got a hurting heart, decreased blood flow to my heart, and then all this kicks in, what's that going to do to my already damaged heart? Make it worse. So, where do you have to go with first side of the chest pain? In Chattanooga. <laughs> so, if I have an increased cardiac workload, what does that do to my oxygen consumption? So it will increase my O2 needs, right? It will decrease the consumption. So, we need more oxygen to get to these cells to keep them from dying, right? Can we do that with a heart that's not pumping right? No. Okay. Now over here, uh, decreased renal perfusion, you'll see an increased, which lab value? Creatinine. Creatinine. Now, what gets stimulated on this side? Renal angiotensin aldosterone system. That shouldn't be a that shouldn't be a dollar sign. So, what happens with with the renal angiotensin aldosterone system? Each step. Each step. So what happens? What does it lead to? Increased flow. Now, what do the angiotensins do? The angiotensins convert angiotensins. They vasoconstrict, right? So, what does the aldosterone system do? Fluid and sodium. Yeah. What? Which way does it go? What do you mean? Does it increase? Is that what you're asking? Yes, it would increase. Increase my sodium? It increases mm -hmm. your, yeah, your sodium and water for all the sodium, so you have an increase in fluid. So, and then increase in water. So, equals increased. Well, this isn't helping at all, is it? <laughs> So neither one of these help, do they, in this situation? <laughs> but the body just, that's just what it does. That's its survival mode. It just does this. So, again, we'll vasoconstrict, so we'll have little coffee stirs. And this will further increase cardiac workload.
increase oxygenate now if we have too much let's see if we if we if reabsorb sodium what are we going to lose so we'll lose potassium oil. Now, do you want to love potassium with any kind of cardiac patient? No. No. Now, if we get too much sodium in our system, then what gets released? What's its friend? Antidiuretic hormone. Anti-diuretic, so they're not going to pee, right? <coughs> so with all this sodium, okay, gotcha. so we kind of get salty, and then we're full, and then we don't pee, and then that increases what? More volume. So is any of that helping? What? Is all this making sense? Yeah. How it all like just kind of flows and gets together? So let's see. So all this leads to increasing blood volume. So there's blood volume. There's that blood volume. That doesn't actually increase blood volume over here. So, if I have too much blood volume and I can't really, the heart's not pumping it out, so it all starts backing up, right? So, it's going to back up into... Now, as an offshoot... So we've got it all blood back, all it backed up into the lungs. So now it's. up and backing up. So now we've got this heart that doesn't want to pump blood out and now my lungs are full of fluid but how do you think they're breathing? They're having labored breathing, right? Crackles. You'll have crackles. Will the respiratory rate go up? If the respiratory rate it keeps going up and up and up and they're blowing off everything, what? They'll go into which kind of alkalosis? Which kind of alkalosis? Oh, look at y'all. Now, what happens here? Since the lungs have got an increased pressure and volume, now this little ventricle is having a struggle. Now, who's way more muscular and used to pumping stuff? Left, left ventricle. What does that pump into? Lungs. Lungs. It doesn't have to push hard at all. So it's like thin and weak. So when all of a sudden now it has to pump, well, it, can't, it cannot handle the pressure. So it's going to start backing up into the right atrium and then back up this way into the body. So you'll see jugular vein distension. So now you'll see jugular vein distension. Does anything happen with the liver? Yes. Hepatomegaly. Splenomegaly. You think they get very hungry? They've got all that extra fluid in their belly. So they get um, anorexia, not the teenage, but 
They just don't want to eat because they've already feel full. They might also have some nausea. Now if we keep on going back, now we've gotten in here, so where is it going to keep going back to? So now we're going to get... Yes. Now if we don't do anything about it, it's going to keep backing up and start off and then back back up to the left ventricle and our cardiac output is going to even go even further down right. Mm -hmm. Well this is just a mess, isn't it? Let's see. So, if they have all this fluid they're going to gain weight, aren't they? So they should be weighed every day at the same time in the same clothes. Or, well, not the same clothes, but you know, the <laughs> same type of clothes. So. Now what this leads to, if there's this increased pressure right here, that re leads to hypertrophy. Y'all heard that word in, in uh, inflammatory? Yeah. And this will also hypertrophy. So what does hypertrophy mean? They get bigger and then they look like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and they can't work as well. I mean, if you're like walking around like that, it's like, you just don't look comfortable. You know, some of those guys that swollen. Like, like, really? Let's see. Now, on top of all this, what if they have atrial fib? <laughs> So is that going to help the cardiac output? No. no. So now our cardiac output is even lower. Oh, one of the... Now some of these um, lung things, we have that dyspnea on exertion. Um, we have uh, that paroxysmal... Nocturnal dyspnea, yeah. mm -hmm. END, can y'all tell me what that is? They wake up at night because they can't breathe because they were laying flat. And so when they're up and sitting, all their fluid is down here. So when they lay flat in the bed, all that fluid comes up here. So then they can't breathe. could, especially in the aorta. So, let me make sure with my notes here. Well, now that's true because if my cardiac output didn't go anywhere and it's not pumping, it's all sluggish throughout my whole body, I have an increased risk of clots, right? 
Um, okay. All right, so what are we going to do to, um, so now y'all see that this is just a vicious cycle, isn't it? The, the less cardiac output and the, it's having to fight against all this, that damages the heart more. We keep doing this, keep doing this, damages the heart more, keep doing this. So you see it's an endless cycle. So how are we going to stop it? <laughs> the number one drug is <laughs> Now, where will lace lace six work? Volume fluid. So here, here's where I need a blue. We're going to give Lasix to help with the volume, right? What else do y'all want to give? Beta blocker. Where do beta blockers going to work? Where do they block? <coughs> so, beta blockers here. Is that going to pick up? Yeah. Or do I need another color? So, beta blockers block beta, which sympathetic nervous system is beta, right? Now, what are the beta blockers? The number one drug that's used for congestive heart failure that's a beta blocker is what? Somebody's saying it. <laughs> so Coreg or Corbetalol, you can go look at the hospital anywhere and check, look on somebody's MAR and if it says Coreg, they have congestive heart failure. That's how specific it is to people with congestive heart failure. Coreg. What other drugs do we want to give? Well, if it's hypertension related, you do the prills. What is a lisinopril? What does A stand for? Angiotensin converting enzyme. Right? So angiotensin is where? So I'm going to give an ACE inhibitor to stop that and stop that. And they are which ones? So those are the prills. What is the side effect of an ACE inhibitor? Cough. Cough. What's a dead bad angioedema? See, y'all remember this stuff from last year? We just had it on this one. For the hypertension. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's live. We were coming there last Well, that's good. See how everything is just inbred? They're all the same. <laughs> They're all the same signs and symptoms. They're all the same drugs. I mean, it's... And then they ask you usually to take like a low dose, 81 milligram aspirin every day to sort of keep your blood thin. You know? So we can give... Aspirin? And I don't know if you want to list it, but digitalis for contractility. Why would I not want to list that? I, I just said it's <laughs> because it's feeding sloppy, so you need it to be forced. No, say that again out loud. 
you would want to give it with congestive heart failure because it's beaten sloppy and you want it to be more firmly. <laughs> yes. Forcefully. So Ditch will Make it increase that force yeah. of contraction, right? Yeah. Does this congestive heart failure, is that what they need? Yes. Do they need a kick in the pants? Yes. Okay. So, what else is Ditch good for? No. What? Yes. So, a fifth. I mean, whatever. Did. Did Johnson will help with this, and it will increase that force of contraction. Now, what else does Did do? What does it do to your heart rate? Decreases. So it will decrease your heart rate. Do we want a decreased heart rate? Yes. Now over here, what sympathetic nervous system increased it? Yeah. Right. Why do we want it slower? So that you don't have a volume rate before it contracts. Do what? Because you want it to fill up so it can contract. We want that toilet bowl to fill up good, right? Push it out, right? Yes, so your ejection fraction will can increase. So you can in, increase your ejection fraction. This this pencil or this marker <coughs> to wear me out. Um. Okay, what other drugs? Some people may require warfarin instead of just the aspirin. They may have to go on like Coumadin or warfarin. Well, why would they also need Coumadin? Because they're pulling away from the lack of to decrease thrombi or they're AFib. Yeah. So then they'll need Coumadin. Also, I mean, it could be for their blood pooling, mm -hmm. but hopefully we're going to fix all that with Lasix. With Lasix. With Dig. Because if we if we can get that force of contraction out and then it can come back to the heart and then be pushed out again and all that fluid hopefully will go away. Hopefully we can reperfuse those uh, kidneys so we can pee again. And our creatinine will go down. And if you're taking Lasix, you can stay with the aspirin. Yep. And if you're already probably going to be so, if I give them Lasix and we already have a problem here, what's it going to do to my potassium level? So it's going to make it, so it'll also decrease the potassium. So what, what are they going to have to take? <laughs> do you see how we're chasing our tails? Now, if I, block, if I give somebody an AC inhibitor and I'm blocking all that, What's my potassium level going to be then? So ACE inhibitors can increase your potassium. Well, this is just crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Some people even go on anti-anxiety medications if it's... I need some of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm Where would... What, which... Share. Which one of these would cause them to have more anxiety? The brain, the renal, or the pulmonary edema? So here are the <coughs> need anti-anxiety. Any other drugs? I think hypertension, the same drug. We can use calcium channel blockers. What do calcium channel blockers do? Block calcium. Block calcium. <laughs> you are right. Increase the contraction of the heart. They put the arteries and stuff open up. They relax the smooth one. So calcium channel blockers. A vasodilate. 
Any other drug? Anything over that kidney side? The what? The ARBs. ARBs. But they, don't they say that's only used if they, the people who can't really use the A's because of the angioedema and the cough, they switch with the ARBs. It's like the second dose. It is. But they're still used, the angiotensin receptor blockers. So this blocks all that too. So they will, you'll see an increased potassium with them. The ARBs were invented because some people had such problems with the ACE inhibitors, so they invented the angiotensin receptor blockers, and they, the ACE inhibitors like block at this level and the range and then the ARBs block down here. So there's still a step that the ran an angiotensin system goes through before these kick in. And these are the sartans. Kozar is an ARB, and I can't remember its sartan name. Um, these are expensive. Not so much. So, cheap, <laughs> Lasix is cheap, Aspirin is cheap, I don't think Didge is that extremely cheap. Beta blockers, cheap, 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 cheap. Mm -hmm. Although Coreg, not so much. So, Enderal, Spropranolol, cheap, Coreg, not, not quite as much. Um, so we have Lasix. Some people don't tolerate Lasix, so they have to have <laughs> hydrochlorothiazide. And then if they can't handle that, because that's still they still lose potassium. So what's the one that they can take to reabsorb to help reabsorb potassium? Potassium is very. Which one's that? Aldactone, spironactone. Now let's remember with DIG, when should you not take your DIG at home? Do not give if your heart rate is below 60. How would you teach your patient to take it at home? Now, we as nurses, how do we take it in the hospital? Apical. So, but you have to teach them because trying to teach somebody who can't breathe but swollen how to put a stethoscope on and try to find their heart. I mean, by then they've increased their cardiac workload and their O2 needs, right? And their anxiety. And their anxiety <laughs> level. So, so, now, DIG, if they take too much DIG, DIG toxicity. What is the hallmark sign of DIG toxicity? Halo. It's like a green, yellow halite. Halo around lights. That's always a state board question. Seems like. It's like in every NCLEX book. Um, also, they're more likely to have toxicity if you have a low potassium. So again, there's potassium. My favorite electrolyte. They also get anorexic. Or have anorexia and nausea. They don't want to eat. And the, to help with, if you have too much dig, you give digibind because it binds with your digoxin. What did you say that digoxin did to get potassium? If you have a low potassium level, you're more likely to get, have dig toxicity. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So how many drugs have we taken? One of Huh? We shouldn't take many of so, and then I'm sure their doctor's going to put them on cholesterol medication. Um, a what? Crystal. Oh, crystal. Um, who knows what else they're all on. If they're diabetic. So all they do is take pills all day long, isn't it? So how many drugs have we, let's see. So I'm going to take Corey. I'm going to take Zestral. What is Zestral? Let's see. I'm going to take Dig. I'm going to take Lasix. I'm on DIG at home. It probably means I have atrial fib, so I'm going to take. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What else? Well, if we're on Coumadin, can we take aspirin? No, no, no. Ron Cumming, can we take NSAIDs? Anti anxiety medicine. No. And you gotta limit your intake of green leafy vegetables because vitamin K will offset for your best. Oh. I had a brain fart. I couldn't <laughs> 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 Oh. They probably won't give them Valium, they'll probably give them um Green Axe. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Any other drugs so far that we've gone over? If they can't, if they're in really bad shape, they might have an ARB also. Okay. Let's see. Places. Is that so? There's just six right there. Some are one a day. Some are two a day. So then what else do they have to do? Can they eat anything? No, they gotta avoid the They have to have a low sodium. Low fat. And then not really a fluid restriction, but it's a dumb down a little. Yeah, they <coughs> They, I mean, they don't want them to have too much fluid. So monitor fluid intake. Does not have to drag around an oxygen tank, right? Yes, yeah, so we should give these patients any in. Any cardiac patient, just stick oxygen on them. First thing, just stick oxygen on them. Get the order later. Um, so then they're also supposed to... Are they supposed to exercise something too? Yeah, they need to walk. Do you think they want to walk? I think, do you think they feel like walking? Do you know how tired these people are? <laughs> it makes me tired thinking about it and talking about it. So, this, it's a pretty big struggle, isn't it, to go home on this? They have now found a gene, I think. They're doing something over there to, that can actually reverse some congestive heart failure. I don't know how soon that this is going to be out or something, but I do know that they came out with, they have discovered something. It's over in England, reports, so now it's, it'll take a while to get over here. I also read reports, too, that they think they're on the verge of finding a cure for 
for diabetes. Oh. Yeah, I read that. Well, I know the cure for CDC, but I don't read for that. Well, I mean, like a, a real for type 1. Oh, for type 1. Now yeah. that'd be good. Yeah. Type 1 is only 10%. Yeah. 90% is type 2. Yeah. And how you cure type 2? Diet, Diet and exercise. Diet and exercise. <laughs> They can, fish oils, stuff. Um, so, bless their hearts. And they also check their B12s. We were talking about that too. B12s, right? Vitamins. They do that then? I thought if your B12 got really low, that it could affect. It affects that homocysteine. <coughs> that homocysteine level. That's an amino acid from eating pro too much protein. And on the veg fruits and vegetables. So I do know that places get, give B12 shots to help you lose weight. But they but actually something that you give their B12 tested. Yeah. I think that you do that. Now, have we fixed these people yet? No. <laughs> well, will we ever. I don't feel a little bit. So if their if their heart <laughs> muscle I've got all the cart <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Who? Did you? She said something. I said I've got all the cart See? Now that means he's gonna inter intersecting some prayer, hoping to get better. <laughs> Start the prayer train, chain going. Heart muscle is damaged. Usually we don't get that back. <clears throat> right? So one part of the heart, I mean the heart's supposed to pump, so one part of the heart is pumping and the other part isn't. So it so they're never gonna get better. Now, the only way we can stop any kind of heart muscle damage is if they're having an MI and they get somewhere that we can do an intervention in the cath lab. And then 20 minutes. No, it's 60. Well, it says 20. It says 20 to 40, I think, in the book. To get to? To get blood flow back. So that there will be, there could be permanent damage after 20 to 40. You know, I thought door to, door to PCI was 60. Are you just telling us that this year? So, well, I think it's a little bit of a Does that, or does that, does that 20 to 40, does that mean going to just getting to the hospital? Yeah. I think it just says, let's go back to the park. Let's cut off for 20 to 40. It has to be permanent damage to the. Yeah, they'll get in a chronic. Just don't ask a question on that. Get to tell us what you want us to. <laughs> well, I've always heard door door to PCI. Like as soon as you hit the door of the ER, by the time you get in the cath lab and you're ready to get cathed, is 60 minutes. My husband was in there way faster than that. By the time he had his heart attack, he was at Erlanger within 20 minutes. Yeah. And they had him in there in under 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, I at the hospital. And he already had moderate heart damage. And they did it that fast, so I guess, what do you do, you know? It's the faster the better. It says, oh, blood absolutely. Flow, it says if blood flow is not restored within 20 minutes, apoptosis ensues, product digestion of the cells begins, and inflammatory response initiates. I guess that's when the damage starts. And then it goes on later on to say, and the evidence says that in another part. Had heart damage scar tissue. Right. That well, that is true, but I think I don't know. I'm not going to pick on. <laughs> Just get there as fast as you can. Don't let Grandma clean the house first. <laughs> Call for a helicopter. <laughs> That's what I told them. The helicopter. The <laughs> so let's all move Chattanooga, right? Yeah. Although they do now, they now do interventions at uh, Sky Ridge. 
but they don't have open heart backup. Although they are much safer now to have a stent or something put in, but if something goes wrong, you want to have a surgeon standing right there. So. But they give you a choice because they asked me where you wanted me to go. I said, Erlanger, my house. So, I did whatever you tell them to, I guess. Um, so, if the heart muscle is damaged, the best way to, to undamage it is to get to the hospital as soon as you can reestablish blood flow. And that is in the cath lab, or they can give those um, clot busters, streptokinase. But now, if I give somebody a clot buster, it doesn't just block, doesn't dissolve the one clot in your heart. It dissolves <coughs> clots in your whole body. So before you can give that, you have to start as many IVs as possible, put the catheter in, have everything ready, and then give the draw blood, all that before you give that. So, now does this all make sense? Right now. Yeah, right now. 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 Right so we're going to have this, we're going to have decreased renal perfusion, we're going to have the brain not get perfused, sympathetic nervous system, the renin angiotensin system comes on. It's going to back up into the lungs. So, oh, another drug, as soon as they come in, especially with an MI, have y'all y'all seen in there your Mona? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Morphine. 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 Oxygen. Nitroglycerin and aspirin. Now, also I forgot about, we need nitroglycerin. These people need nitroglycerin. Do y'all know what nitroglycerin does? Yes, vasodilates. Vasodilates where? Everywhere. It does dilate everywhere. Include, and the best place it dilates is the coronary arteries. Now the coronary arteries, so like here's the heart, and the coronary arteries sit on top and feed. Just like, you know, your hand, blood vessels. So these actually are on top of the heart, and they get fed right here where the aortic valve is. There's a, got little openings right there at the aortic valve. And so then they get blood flow every time. They actually get the blood flow on um, during diastole. Because during systole it's getting kind of squirted out. And so during diastole that's when the heart muscle itself is getting fed. So there's three main vessels. And right, left, right, LAD, and circumflex. They talk about how you need to know which vessel. And, um, unless y'all go into cardiac. So, nitroglycerin, what it'll do, it will actually make these fat. Make these be McDonald's coffee, or McDonald's mass flow rate straws. So, if there's a blockage right here, if I vasodilate it, then hopefully blood will get kind of scoot around that. Right. So, and what what does this do here if I'm blocking all that off? It's, 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 it's infarcting. What happens when you infarct? <laughs> you die. It's 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 it. It. Chest pain. Oh, chest pain. Oh, chest yeah. pain. So <laughs> then you give that's when you give the nitroglycerin <coughs> and morphine. What does morphine do? Makes you feel good. It does. Um, it also vasodilates, and it helps with the pain. And so then, if you're having chest pain, are you anxious at all? So it takes care of that, right? But if I give both of these, what's going to happen to my blood pressure? It's going to decrease. 
And if somebody's never taken nitroglycerin before, you get a severe headache because it vasodilates in your head. So if y'all ever put on nitro paste on a patient, wear gloves. Because I have gotten it on myself and have had a bad headache. So don't do that. So, so then they will probably need nitroglycerin because all this decreased cardiac output, can't get it out, it's going to cause chest pain, so they're going to need nitroglycerin. They're going to have their little brown bottle that they carry around or their spray. And the, the little brown bottles, I think they have to be changed out every three months. Six. Six? Yeah, that's what I say. I carry it all the time for my husband. On his, well, the, they're supposed to only three months is the best because then they start losing their potency. Yeah. But well, I'll start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so then they start losing their potency. What do you want to do first? What do you mean? What's the first thing you do? Want to be Mona? Lord, this is a mess, isn't it? That's a, that's a brain of a crazy woman right there. Isn't it? So if they come in, oxygen comes first. Oxygen first. Now what are we talking about? Congestive heart failure or an MI or both? MI. Just say they come in with the MI. Would you give them the oxygen first and then? What What can you grab first? Just whatever's there. Oxygen. Your oxygen is usually there. Then we're gonna start a line. No. I worked at uh, a big heart hospital in Nashville. Most nurses just had nitroglycerin in their pockets. Or we just, or we kept it on top of the Pixis or on top of the nurse's station or whatever. So we would just have it and just could throw it in. So, but you follow Mona anytime they come in. But now, if somebody's coming in with you know, congestive heart failure, I don't know that I'd be running to put, give them morphine just yet. No. I would probably want to give them laces. All that unstable angina, the, non, the ACS, which is a, a non STEMI and a STEMI. A non-ST elevated MI or a ST elevation MI. Mm -hmm. 